And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Pirate Lux. Um, we're going to be trying out this deck again. This was a donation deck that we actually played um, about three weeks ago is whenever we first played it. So basically right after, um, you know, basically right after the new set came out. Um, it's, it's, it's some jank, but, uh, you know, it's kind of surprising. It was surprisingly good. Um, but it's not perfect, you know. I don't don't expect to be getting a 5-0 in Masters rank or anything like that with this deck. But let's take a look at it. What we're trying to do here is we are trying to uh, get some powder kegs out. You know, we have Deckhand, More Powder, Petty Officer. All of these make powder kegs. Gangplank makes powder keg. And then with our powder keg, what we're going to be trying to do is cast Unyielding Spirit on the powder keg. Grant an ally, I can't take damage or die course you know this card so we got unyielding powder keg um and then after we have an unyielding power keg then suddenly our spells that do damage do a ton of damage now the thing is we don't really have spells that do damage too much to be honest uh we have make it rain and parley that's about it um our gangplank can attack and deal damage if it's leveled up um but <laughs> riptide we have one riptide rex Right, that can get that can get some damage in there. So as you can tell, we don't really have that, which I was really surprised. Like whenever we played this the first time, I thought like that's not nearly enough. We have all these like such a high amount of powder cards. That's not enough. But I don't know. It kind of it kind of worked out. You basically just really just need one maker rate. Like if you can stack. Okay, so if you put an unyielding spirit on a on a uh, powder keg, then you can continually stack the powder kegs on top. And if you can get, you know, like five powder kegs, for example, and you cast a make it rain that that then does six damage to three different things, well, you're probably just going to win that game. Like that's <laughs> that's just incredible. So I guess so I guess like all you really need is just like the one make it rain or like the one gangplank trigger or stuff like that. Um, but oh, well, anyway, um, the other the other part of our deck, of course, is just being a really good Lux deck because Lux is just incredible. So just trying to go Lux unyielding spirits. That's also really good. And then we have your Remembrance, your back-to-back, -back, um, things like that that will get you the final sparks from Lux. So um, this is also another way to, like Lux, the final sparks from Lux is also just another way to use your um, uh, use your powder kegs also. I guess I didn't mention that one. That is one too. Okay, so we'll, we'll play this deck again. Wanted to play a fun deck today. You know, like we're, we're playing, I played three decks that uh have definitely gone downhill after patch one two but i know a lot of y'all have been been asking about them uh so you know i want to kind of spend a, a time doing that like the the old tier one decks um and then we're gonna play play a fun game to finish it out a fun deck let's see so we're playing against gangplank with noxus that sounds pretty aggressive none of these cards are that good at stopping aggressive i guess single combat Yeah. Of Remembrance and Single Combat. Those, those can work. Single Combat does not uh, do much with more powder. Like, powder kegs uh, don't really help. Like, that's a spell and a skill dealing damage, not um, an ally. Hmm. Do I have to cast this parlay? Can I take six damage next turn? If I do cast the parlay and then they have just any other threat, ah, uh, if I would have known I would have had that, could have could have cast parlay. I can definitely see this deck playing some of, like, the Mage Seekers. Mage Seekers are good. Death doesn't scare me. Run while you can. While you can. Hmm. 
Ideally, like, probably my best play would be play more powder and then kill that 4-3 that overwhelm. But it's risky. That's a pretty risky play. So if they kill the powder kegs, then it doesn't kill that. So are we going to have enough time to Unyielding Spirit Powder Keg in this matchup? Or am I going to have to like Unyielding Spirit Gangplank, for example? Or should I have just Unyielding Spirited the Moose? With me attacking twice with that card. That's scary. That was scary. Hey, swear slow. You have a donation deck? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, deep deep is definitely good in the ladder. Okay, so you have a deep donation deck. Alright, I can play that tomorrow. Do I look like a patient man? Thank you. Let the light guide you. The thing about playing Lux is I, you know, I don't get to kill this thing. Okay. I'll have my revenge one way or other. Unfortunately, we didn't get to play against my that opponent. Like what they were just doing, I, I wish we would have played against them with the car, you know, either of our control decks, our Shadow Isles control decks, with all the life gain that we had earlier. I wish we would have played against that. Oh well. Hey, what's up, Topher? Thanks for the raid. Welcome everybody from Topher's stream. We are playing a fun one here now that uh, we got um, we started. Okay, so we started the day with just playing some of the decks that got hit the hardest with the new patch update and seeing if they're still would be pretty good. The control decks were kind of rough. Um, didn't do good with either one. And now we're playing just a fun deck. We're playing Unyielding Powder Keg. That's what we're doing. Delicious. Unyielding Powder Keg. doesn't always work, but when it does work, it's going to be sweet. <laughs> yeah, try to go, yep, try to get, yep, try to get ginormous lasers with that overwhelm, let's just get tons and tons of overwhelm with that. Make the Empire proud. We lost our first game, we got ran over by Noxus Bilgewater, now we got Noxus Freljord. Running us over for the minute. Probably need to. I guess maybe I need to unyielding spirit this moose. I don't know. Just give me some time. Give me some time to set up.
think I don't want to play anything so that I can play Unyielding Spirit next turn. On the moose. Your path ends here. Cause playing like you know, playing like Petty Officer makes their Braum better. I don't really want to make their Braum better. I could play the salvage, but that would just limit our mana for next turn. Pass. I don't mind playing Lux first and then playing Unyielding Spirit the next turn. I feel this, this is fun, yes? They need like Elixir of Iron, or they're just sacrificing the Braum. Transfusion. Use another thing, and they basically can level up Braum the next turn. Yeah, so they're just gonna be able to level up Braum. Hmm. Guess I should have waited and put that on a powder keg. Uh, no. No, I don't know anything about, like, what the event pass will look like in July besides that one video, um, that they put out last weekend, you know, just kind of announcing that that was something that they're working towards. That's all I've seen. But no, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Like, it looks like, you know, like that we're gonna have, um, a bunch of new stuff with the game here in the coming months. Which is pretty exciting. Sure, waste my time. Behold, my glory. Yielding Spirit turn it was not good, not good against Braum. That was bad. Basically, the un basically this, the Unyielding Spirit on the Greyhorn Companion is what I should have done the previous game, and so then this game, then I overcorrected and I did it this game, but it's not really what I should have done this game. So I don't have anything that I, I, that can let me survive back to back. Um, you know, can kill like the Crimson Disciple, but I'm still taking lethal. I can just like play this out and get. Uh, just get something else to block, but I'm still just taking lethal that when they attack. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is just over. Vladimir, plus from the side of lethal. Losing is just an opportunity to shine even brighter. Okay, it's po possible this deck isn't any good anymore. <laughs> I think we, we may have done well with it, like, the first... Uh, weak because people were just also playing a bunch of decks that were not very good. Um. Yeah.
yeah, this, okay. I mean, I, I talked about, okay, basically before we, we played, like, at the beginning of the stream, like, uh, you know, not on the YouTube video, I talked about how, like, Gangplank Lux on Yielding Spirit is probably a pretty good deck, but we should just be playing, like, the good Bilgewater cards, you know, like, um... One of these cards, not any good. Uh, but we could just play like the, the good Bilgewater cards um, alongside of them, or good Demacia cards. But chat voted for going with this deck with the Unyielding Keg, and maybe that's maybe that's like why I lost. The, I mean, that's definitely why I lost like that second game. I should try to go for Unyielding Keg. I just haven't had time. People have just been killing me too fast. Killing me way too fast. Hopefully the deep deck's a little slower. So that will give us. All right, so we'll go gangplank on five to make a powder keg, and then let's see. Okay, so no, no, no. So we're gonna go. Yeah, we'll go gangplank on five. Uh, Lux on six. On turn seven, we could have ten. We'll have ten mana. So I'll go more powder and then unyielding spear at the powders. Because this powder is going to die. And then... Hold back the darkness. And then... Um, so yeah, turn 7, we'll go more powder on Yielding Spirit, and then we'll level up Lux. We can do this. In the process. And create Final Spark, and then we'll have Powder Kegs with Final Spark. Alright, we got a plan of how to do how to do what our deck's supposed to do. On Yielding Powder Keg. Yeah, the, the kegs just keep stacking. Kegs just keep stacking. So yeah, it's happening. As long as they don't, you know, kill my Lux. You've concerns, do you? So the problem there is now we don't get to, now we're not going to have the mana to be, play more more powder and unyielding spirit. We can only just unyielding spirit. So I could unyielding spirit the Lux, but that's not really what our deck's about. Back to back to level up Lux. The water rises. So I want to detain that, but if I do detain that, like then we're going to have to play Unyielding Spirit on whatever we use to detain it, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, we kind of have to detain this. But then what, am I going to have to Unyielding Spirit Lux? Like, I don't want to Unyielding Spirit Lux. I've been hiding my light too long. I want to Unyielding Spirit the Powder Keg. This is a difficult one. Yeah, we do need to draw another Unyielding Spirit. That is true. That's that's exactly what we need to do. Use my powder kegs. But we should. Of course, the other option was back to back. Don't burn on Yielding Spirit. That's the card I need. Plus more, more powder kegs. A beacon through the dark. Their bones are splinter. Keeps them from gaining life. All right. Well, we got the win. That's the good news. Bad news, we didn't get to Unyielding Spirit the Powder Keg. But the good news is we got the win. That's good. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't our main plan, but we got the W. What's up, everybody from Fresh Lobster? Big time raid. What's up, everybody? All right, so today, uh, what we did today is uh, we played we played some of the decks that got really that really got hit the hardest with the patch. But I know a lot of people have been asking about how how they still were. You know, Karma Thresh control, uh, the Karina control, the new burn deck. Control decks didn't look as good. wasn't wasn't super impressed with them. Um, and so then afterwards, now this last last one, last video here, we we're playing we're playing more of a meme deck. We're we're going with unyielding powder keg. That's what we're, that's what we're trying to do. Unyielding spirit powder keg. Oh, you're welcome, Adam. <laughs> Tommy goes, oh man, you're not supposed to let the enemy reduce your nexus health below zero. That's what I was doing wrong. Well, now that you figured it out, just don't let that happen again. And then you'll be good. What's up, Phoenix? 
and all the lobsters out there. Thanks for that big raid. So the thing about our deck is we don't actually have that many ways to use the powder kegs. We basically have Make It Rain and Lux's Final Sparks. That's kind of about it. So like we don't have the best of powder kegs. I whipped up something special. <laughs> All right, yeah. Take care, fresh lobster. Have a good night. It's like they're daring me to play Make It Rain. And then they would Mystic Shot my Powder Keg in response. Definitely wish I had... Definitely wish I had three mana I could parlay first and then Make It Rain. Alright, so now if they use mana to stop this from happening, it's their turn five. Turn five is an important one for Vi Heimerdinger. And you know, it's gonna it's gonna happen. I, I definitely thought about going like this back to back on the powder cake. That'd be kinda cool. So based on the control games you played earlier, do you think Control's having a tough time to meta? Um, yeah. Yeah. It just... The threats are so big. Like, they're not... Like, before... Earlier... Like, before Burn... Like, the Burn nerf really hurt Control, because that was, like, what Control was good against, was, like, the really small units and, and stabilizing against the, the small things. But um, now that all the small things are kind of gone and um, they're just a lot bigger threats. It, it is difficult for control. So we think they still have that mystic shot? Obviously, more powder plus parlay would kill that, but not if they have Mystic Shots. Even if they do have Mystic Shot, I guess I could single... Uh, this would still do one damage, and I could single combat. Kill Heimerdinger, worst comes to worst. Um, today, I've been... How long have I been streaming? For about... Uh, four hours and 16 minutes about, if that's what you mean, or if you just mean, like, overall how long have I been streaming? Um, close to four years now. Let's see. Deckhand or nah? Oh, we'll go deckhand. Left when I'm done. Yeah, Heimer Vi is definitely good. This is it's not as much of a control deck though, in the the sense of like the um, like the Shadow Isles control decks are. It's this definitely like this definitely plays. This is much more of a mid range deck for how it plays, um, because it's you know in the mid game like turn five you are turning the corner with Heimerdinger and Vi being huge huge threats in the mid-game. They're, they're just both incredibly good champions. 
And it's not really a, a control deck, you know, it doesn't doesn't have that much removal, it doesn't have that many much like you know, it doesn't have like sweepers and stuff like that. Really wish this would kill Heimerdinger. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, I've been streaming Rune Terra since February, basically every day. So I, yeah, I stream every day. So I, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, those four days, I stream at 11 a.m. Eastern. Stream in the morning. Um, and then, uh, sorry, then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I stream in the evening. I start at 4 p.m. Eastern. So they're definitely just trying to kill me right now. So that's how they are playing. Unyielding Spirit on the keg just doesn't really do anything right now. And this is kind of a problem playing the parlay, because I want to play the parlay next turn and then be able to play Riptide Rex, but I also ha I just have to survive. That's the thing we gotta do, too, is survive. And so basically I wanted I want to use this to kill one, and if they make like another one, I can have a single combat kill one. Yeah, I wish I could un I wish I would just unyielding spear at the powder keg this turn though. Maybe I should, because we are playing. Ugh. Is that lethal? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's see, wait. Nine plus four is thirteen. I'm at fourteen. So not lethal. But basically lethal. Go down to one. If they have a burn spell, I lose. Yeah, I just can't on Yielding Spirit. I want to so bad, but I just can't. Attack with Hammerdinger. You got legs. Use them. Definitely want them to attack with Hammerdinger and eat that. Really wish they did. Imagine if we still had a powder keg, like unyielding spirit powder keg with Riptide Rex, because then it just, you know, like adds up for all seven of the cannon barrages. That would have been awesome. That's what I, I, I honestly really wanted it. We just didn't have the ability to get that, but I really wanted that. <laughs> Come on, what are we doing? Four cannon barrages on the Shadow Assassin? Can't we throw just like one of these on this floor be gone? One of these four go over here. Uh, 
<clears throat> so I need to draw... Make it rain. Oh no, now this thing's a 4-2. I mean, I guess still make it rain to take out the 3-1. Yeah, all right. Got to make it rain. We got to got to get rid of the three one. Good. Can't really imagine this is going to work. But they would be they would be willing to play a twin disciplines and pump power and yet not play the 4-2 and not you know, without any protection. I can't I can't imagine it does that, that works. Bad luck on the cannon barrages. Yeah, well, it was it was a bad luck, and <laughs> our deck's pretty janky. We can't afford bad luck against a really good deck like that, especially one with two Heimerdingers. Ugh. And then just making all those turrets. I think they played two Heimerdingers. Maybe they just played the one. I don't remember. This is the Heimerdinger deck that I think's better. I, I think this deck that w I think I think Heimerdinger Lux is better than Heimerdinger Vi. Myself. Because, yeah, yeah, you can have Unyielding on Heimerdinger. <laughs> that is pretty silly. You have all the Mage Seekers. That's the worst one to hit. Which one do they get? <laughs> Come on, their deck's already better. Why do they get the better Remembrance? So they just get the Elite. And I don't get the elite. That's not cool. Banish the unworthy. What are your thoughts on unyielding in general? Think it needs a nerf, or is there a lot of overreaction to it? I, mean, I don't think that it really I don't know about if I don't know that if it needs a nerf or not but I, I don't think that it ever should have been printed I just Hope burns on. I think that yeah I don't I don't think that was a good print you'll fight or you'll swim. there's just not very much upside like that's it's just a card that um kind of creates a lot of negative energy. It's just a card, you know, it's, it's just the kind of card that um, we'll make, we'll just have, we'll just create a lot of feel-bads when people lose to it, kind of thing. What seems to be the problem? And therefore, I, I just don't think it was a, a necessity to print, but they did. Like, I don't know what the upside is. I don't know, like, what... It just seems like there's much more downside to a card like that than upside. Of, like, people feel like it... That's the kind of card that would drive people away from your game more than oh, pull people in. Obviously, I want to get rid of Heimerdinger as early as possible, but it's just not single combat's not reliable. 
Neither is detained. Detain on, you know, like what, a, a 3 1 or a 1 1? The upside is unyielding powder keg. Yes, that is true. That is an upside. And, like, there is, there is definitely some upside, but I'm just not convinced it outweighs the downside a card like that would have. Let the light guide you. Illuminate the enemy. Never back down from what you believe. Be surprised if we win this. I'm sure they have a lot better cards than these Dreadway deckhands and parlays. <laughs> we have four pretty useless cards. And, um, I'm, yeah. So I'm pretty sure they're going to be doing a lot better. And they have a Heimerdinger in play. We spent five mana on the detain, so I want to I want to play the one mana card to try to level up Lux. So I guess the parlay isn't completely useless. Turret's too tough. Too tough for this parlay. Too tough. Okay. I've been hiding my light too long. Kind of weird timing. You'd think they would do that in response to the final spark. All the damage in we can. I think that's worth two toughness loss on the Great Horn Companion, getting three damage in and killing their turret. Yes! Unyielding Spirit can go on this Great Horn Companion so they don't get their Lux back. Unless they have another unless they have a detain. Um hmm. Or do I try to single combat so they don't get the six one? What's the six one? Is it overwhelm? Yeah. That's probably fine. I 
hopefully this works. Ooh, it worked. All right, we got a scout. As long as they don't have detain. Like that, like that's yeah, like that's like the only card, right? Detain. Unyielding should grant vulnerable to allow counterplay. I could see that. I could see that. So that, like, at least if you're going to attack into something with an unyielding spirit, at the very least you can choose who it blocks. It's kind of weird, like... Um... Flavor-wise, though, right? Like, this unyielding spirit that, like... You know, it's it's an it's an unyielding spirit. You can't take damage, you can't die, you have, like, this great spirit, yet you're vulnerable? Kinda weird. Yeah, I guess you're you're easily goaded into an attack. Okay. It says if you if you can't die and you run out ahead, you're easily isolated. No! A purify? No! Purify! At least they don't get their Lux back. No! Going to the light. Well, dang. So we both have four cards. Unfortunately, three of mine are useless. <laughs> oh, Dreadway deckhand's so bad. I should have just played the Lux last turn. I was worried about it being vulnerable. Should have just played it last turn. Obviously, if I knew I was going to be drawing on Yielding Spirit. Come on. I guess, yep, definitely should have played it. Obviously, the, the passing and not playing the Lux is looking like a really bad mistake right now. And it I guess I didn't realize we were about to die. I, I wanted to, so basically I wanted to make sure like whenever I did play the Lux that I would be able to have um Wow, what a draw. Either we kill them or we kill all their stuff. All right, we kill all their stuff. It worked. 
<laughs> it worked. We did it. We did it. Worth it. Worth it. All right, we had something good. We had a, that top deck make it rain. That was the card I was hoping to draw. So we had it the whole time. <laughs> See, you have to you have to take your lumps with the you know R N Jesus has you know has to doesn't always shine doesn't always uh, shine down upon you. But sometimes you have lux and the light follows her. And you draw the Make It Rain exactly when you need it. So there we go. Um, basically, Lux, Remembrance, Gangplank, um, <laughs> Agent Iowa. Hey, thanks for the big time cheer. Unyielding kegs. Heck yeah, thank you so much. Um, yes, yeah, so like there's like definitely some good stuff with this deck. Like there's definitely some some power here. Um, at the top end. The, the problem is just uh, some of these other cards, you know, like Dreadway Deckhands, Petty Officer. I really didn't like those cards at all. You know, kind of the same with more powder, but you do need ways to get kegs. I mean, besides just Gangplank. I kind of think maybe just more powder. Like more powder is two mana towards Lux, so that's good. But I think, like, probably a, a better version of this deck. Take out Shell Shocker, Dreadway Deckhand. You know, like, basically, you just take out, like, this this stuff take out those things you know you can keep the more powders take out like what if we just like took out those and then played you know good cards like pilfer goods and black market merchant and stuff like that you know we're at 22 out of 15 so we could have um you know especially if we put in three more we can play yordle grifters you know that's 25 and 15 so you know, our yordle grifters will be stealing stuff a lot of the time I feel like that would be better, uh, you know, better, like, I think, I think the, basically those cards would just be better. <laughs> I guess that's, that's uh, the way to put it. Um, we'd still keep our powders, still be able to do our, our powder uh, stuff. Um, so yeah, if you want to go Unyielding Spirit Powder, I'd recommend making those three changes. Black Market Merchant, Pilfer Goods, and Yordle Grifter are just ridiculously strong cards. And... <laughs> They give you some more, some more play. Um, no, I, I don't think this deck would work nearly as well without Lux. I think Lux, besides Unyielding Spirit, I think Unyielding Spirit and Lux are like the two most important things to make this deck win games. Um, uh, yes, I, I did make a deck with Dawn Speakers, actually. Actually, we had, um, I did a, uh, let's see, what did we call it? Um, Monkey Fortune. Um, this deck was, uh, here we go. Here's Monkey Fortune from YouTube. Um, we actually did really, really well with it. It was supposed to try to make infinite monkeys, you know, using Dawn Speakers, but we basically never did the, the monkey stuff, but Dawn Speakers was amazing. And it was just, you know, Quinn, Misfortune, Quinn, um, Demacia with Dawn Speakers, and it was really, really good. Um, so yeah, recommend checking out that deck. Anyway, um, there we go. Pirate Lux. Having some fun to end the stream today. All right, those of y'all on YouTube, uh, hit that like button over there. Leave those comments. Um, I always like seeing those comments. You got any questions, comments, that kind of stuff. Um, love seeing that support. So, um, thank you again for watching though. I really appreciate it. And I will see you for the next video.